everyone just assumed that, well, testosterone is why men are bigger, stronger, faster. But when we finally studied it, there's no relationship between tes- natural testosterone and performance. So, Dude, what the f***? So guys, Derek, moreplates.com. Today we are going to be talking about male advantage due to testosterone. First crucial question in the debate, followed by a remarkably bad or dishonest assessment of the evidence to totally rewrite the physiology, physiology of male versus female performance. Here's the clip, then a handful of tweets to correct the falsehood. So this is Ross Tucker at Science of Sport responding to this clip on CNN of the controversy over transgender girls in sports. And this, uh, who is it? Veronica Ivy, presumably, is about to, you know, give a the rundown of pharmacology and explain why, you know, testosterone is not performance enhancing. And it's, uh, you know, just harks back to the old fucking uh, data we had from the 60s or 70s that shows that, you know, steroids don't actually fucking help with performance, which we all know is bullshit. So let's hear what she has to say. Is that those born male have a natural physiological advantage that also includes differing levels of testosterone. You know the argument. Your response to that is what? Yeah, it's uh, it's a nonsense argument. So depends on how much time you want. Let me get into the weeds because I can literally spend hours on this. How about thirty? How so, about thirty seconds? <laughs> yeah. So the first thing is um, testosterone. Your natural, internally produced endogenous testosterone has zero impact on your athletic performance, and we know that. But we didn't know that until 2013. Because everyone just assumed that, well, testosterone is why men are bigger, stronger, faster. But when we finally studied it, there's no relationship between tes- natural testosterone and performance. So, Dude, what the fuck? <laughs> why is testosterone banned? Well, every body produces a different amount. And when you add to it through exogenous means, doping, there is a performance advantage. But when you take a body's natural amount and you drop below it, there tends to be a performance disadvantage. So by this logic, hypogonadal men are totally fine. They're just making everything up. The fact that they feel like dog shit, can't even fucking recover from the gym, gain a bunch of fat, look terrible, this is just because of what exactly? Like what? what's the fucking reason? It seems like you know low test makes no difference, right? It's only if they were on gear that they would then be performance enhanced, right? For example, in uh, one study, they found in this elite set of male athletes, some men below the women's average for testosterone were competing at no competitive disadvantage with men that had 40 times as much testosterone. So she's saying if you had like women's range, we're talking like 40, we're talking about like Isaiah Miranda test almost. Actually, Isaiah Miranda is like on the low end of female territory. So we're talking like probably like double Isaiah Miranda. So we're talking like 40, you know, 44 or 42. Let's just say 42. So that guy who's 42 and literally like wants to kill himself because he's so fucking nuked and his gonads are doing fucking nothing for him. That guy is going to perform as well as guys who have 700, 800, 900 nanogram per deciliter total test levels. What do you think the likelihood is of that? Like, come fucking on, dude. No, oh, I guess that I guess that was the end of the clip. I thought she was gonna say something else. So, anyways, Ross Tucker, uh, like I could literally fucking scientifically di- dismantle the fuck out of this. And I actually don't even need to. Like Ross Tucker laid it out perfectly, and I was reading through it um, like about a week ago. And uh, I was like, oh, wow, this is a really good thread, so I might just make a video on it. He says, Veronica Ivy describes a testosterone performance link as a nonsense argument, but she has to first deceptively reframe the issue to do this and sidestep physiological reality. Note the question, male versus female difference. So it's male compared to female, not within male or female. Her response is that endogenous tea has zero impact on athletic performance. Then she tries to explain this as a revolutionary breakthrough in knowledge. Is nothing of the sort. What she does is to take evidence within male and within female and pretend it's relevant between them. So if we look at a men's athletic cohort and a women's athletic cohort, we find poor relationships between performance and T-level. This is obvious though. Why? Because they're homogeneous and similar for that characteristic already. That is, men have already been androgenized 
And women have not been androgenized by the effects of tea during development. She is making a classic error of selection here. If you take a group that already has or lacks in the case of women, an attribute, that attribute becomes less important for the outcome of interest. Easiest example. We all know that VO2 max is crucial for endurance runners, right? But within a group of Olympic marathon runners, it has a lousy predictive value for performance. Why? because everyone from that elite marathon group has already been selected out for that attribute. Similarly, height is clearly important for basketball, but within the NBA, height matters much, much less because it's a characteristic possessed by all the competitors too. Attribute X gets you through the door, but once in, all the other attributes matter and what you share with. Everyone else and what you share with everyone else here Holy fuck. <laughs> but once in, all the other attributes matter and what you share with everyone else is no longer decisive. You'd be an idiot to conclude that VO2 max or height doesn't matter, uh, don't matter for endurance, performance, and basketball on the basis of your assessment of elite runners or NBA players only. You have to look at the whole population and find those who lack it. Like it feels just like, at this point, it feels like fuckery of the semantics. Like all of us can tell definitively that if I literally castrated you tomorrow, do you really think your gym performance and your athletic athletic performance would not suffer? Like, of course it would, you know, like it's a fucking no brainer, dude. And if you were castrated and then suddenly you were cured and you were producing high tier test levels, do you really think it would make no fucking difference in your performance? <laughs> of course it would, dude. And it's not even just in an athletic context, even neurological health, things like motor unit recruitment, things that are not even really necessarily tied directly to muscle protein synthesis at the muscle fiber level, like even just in the brain, like shit going on with, you know, mood regulation, all of it's going to play into your ability to compete at a high level and perform well, you know? So her assessment is like so fucking far off. It's ridiculous, dude. Um, let's see, when you do that, then, hey, look, a high VO2 max is a prerequisite, prerequisite to be an Olympic marathoner. Now go back to the question, does T affect performance? It's deeply misleading to force the answer into a male only and female only group. The key here is male compared to female. That's what Ivy Canton won't address. She has to avoid it because it's so clear that performance differences between men, uh, male and female exist in large part because of the of physiological differences that arise due to T's androgenizing effects in male bodies. Pretending otherwise is deceitful. This leads us to the next important concept that she's misleading viewers about. The level of T is not the important, it's the effects of T on the physiology. That's important for two reasons. One, T levels become a red herring. Two, it begs questions of correcting the advantage. So had he been given a legitimate answer to this question about T and performance, um, who's this guy? Uh, Michael Smirkonish. Next question here might have been, okay, and if T creates the advantages, then it can be reduced in order to remove the advantages. That's what sports policy has tried to do before. Here, one must look to the to data and ask whether the physiological attributes that are clearly distinct as a result of T in male versus female bodies, things like muscle mass, strength, power, etc., are removed or reduced when T is suppressed. The answer from dozens of studies is clearly no. That is, while T suppression causes some reductions in various systems, it fails to reduce them sufficiently for parity, so advantages persist. That's the root of unfairness and safety concerns for women's sport. At this point, some may depart and assess that evidence differently. You may say it doesn't matter. That inclusion trumps those two imperatives. That's a matter of assessment, philosophy, etc. I don't agree. I believe women have a right to be to a protected category and what is being protected against is created by androgens like T, despite Ivy's myth mythology. What really can't persist is the kind of nonsense rewriting of physiology, physiology that Dr. Veronica Ivy engages in here. It's not even weeds. If you're in the media, you have to call out this kind of misinformation irrespective of motives. Opinions, fine, but we don't get to make up facts. Um, yeah, so anyways, um, obviously there's huge differences in body composition of males versus females. Obviously, if you take a certain amount of tea or I like even me getting into the semantics, like I feel like I'm like tripping over her own fucking dumb points here. It's like at the end of the day, if you have a chick who is literally grew up with a certain tea level and developed myonuclei banked up in her fucking muscle fiber, far superior to that of a genetically like born female, like what do you think the outcome of that is going to be? Just And just in that alone too, that's not even counting the other um, differences in phil physiology caused by androgenization in, you know, however, whatever duration of exposure they had to, you know, higher endogenous T levels, significantly higher, like 10 times higher in the average male versus female. So like at the end of the day, like we all know that there's evidence to suggest that myonuclei can be banked up by having androgen receptor activation translocating into the nucleus and causing muscle protein synthesis, building of contractile proteins and down the line, however much myonuclei, myonuclei you banked up 
via AR activation is going to be something that is retained for years on end. This is where the idea of a performance advantage lies for years of even post exposure, even in, you know, like normal men's sports. So to say that a genetic female versus somebody who has been exposed to 10 times the hormone exposure in their youth or whatever, for however many years, the person who had the 10 times exposure is not going to have some sort of advantage in some sort of permanent aspect is just fucking dumb, dude. So like, it's almost like I don't even know what argument I'm engaging in right now when I'm reading this shit. Like at the end of the day, we all know anabolics are going to enhance performance. And yeah, she's like, she's trying to argue that the endogenous testosterone makes no difference. It's like, well, like why the fuck is there such a disparity between performance outcomes in men's versus women's sports? Like, obviously we know the fucking difference. We see it all the time. You know, what are hundred meter times of men versus women? Like what, like it's not fucking rocket scientists to figure this out. So anyways, maybe, maybe I'm even missing over the semantic bullshit she's trying to say here. But at the end of the day, I think we know the answer to this. And it's kind of ridiculous that we even have to engage in these kind of debates when it's so clear what the fucking answer is, you know? So um, that is my stance on it. I thought it was an interesting breakdown. And Ross Tucker did a fantastic job kind of uh, dismantling her arguments. So uh, this is a topic that people have been asking me to touch on for a very long time. And uh, maybe it deserves another, you know, deep dive video. But I mean, like at the end of the day, it seems kind of silly for me to even, you know, discuss further than there's an obvious difference between the physiology, physiology of genetic males with male level testosterone levels versus you know females with female level testosterone levels let me know what you guys think in the comments down below like subscribe check my blog more place for dates .com. follow me on instagram at more place for dates facebook snapchat bitch you twitter tiktok couple podcasts if you want to support the channel you can check out anything i'm associated with in the video description below my trt clinic it's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home gorilla mind nootropic formulas gorilla mode pre-workout formulas i designed myself from scratch my recommended lab tests and diagnostics to stay on top of your health anything else i'm associated with it's all in the video description below thank you guys for watching talk to you soon